Oh, it's our job to coach it into these guys. We got a lot of guys that have that. Um, we just, it wasn't there as a team. And it started in practice all week, I thought. And um, and we, we got to do a better job coaching it into them. We certainly tried to coach it into them. Uh, I think a little bit we got a young team that thought they won one game and everything was good. And um, the next one was going to be a a win, too. And that's not the way this game works. So uh, hopefully our young players learned a lesson and, and we won't let it happen again. Our next question comes from Drake Keeler. Yeah, so the last two years you've headed into the Iowa game off of a win, 2018 against Michigan State, 2019 against Maryland. Is the energy coming into a rivalry game any different coming at, coming off of a big loss? No, I don't think so. Uh, our guys have responded this week. Um, energy's way better. I think they're excited to play Iowa. Iowa's a really good team. Uh, it's going to be a black and blue game like it always is against those guys. They're going to make you earn it, and uh, we respect them, but we want to play as hard as we can and um, think the guys are going to prepare. Next question comes from Parker Gabriel, Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, Scott, did you think – any different of your quarterback performance overall after watching the film? And obviously you've been through the ups and downs of being a college quarterback. What, how can you help instill confidence in, in the way those guys play and just the, the pace that they play at? Uh, pace has been good this year. Those guys are running hard. Um, they're evading rush when they need to. Um, timing on throws needs to be a little better. You know, we're really young outside, so it isn't that it's not all in the quarterbacks. Um, but overall, our quarterback play wasn't good enough on Saturday, particularly the turnovers. We got off to such a bad start. Um, but just like every week, we're going to let those guys compete. I've, I've been talking to those guys about just what you asked, um, being confident. Both of them believe in, in the type of player they are and the type of throwers they are. And um, they both have the capability of, of doing it. Is there is there an added dimension to the challenge, just given how young you are outside? I'm not trying to make excuse for for those guys, but I mean, does it make it hard for a quarterback to be confident if you can't trust that a guy is going to be in the right spot at the right moment? No, oh, yeah, oh yeah, that's that's the passing game. Um, shoot, we've thrown for a lot of yards in this offense, and we're not on track to do that this year. Um, we got the kids in the program that I think are going to be great receivers. Um, they're all young. A lot of them are young. Uh, a couple of veterans that are doing a really good job. But um, our quarterbacks need to trust them, and we need to be in the right spot, and we need to be at full speed and all those things. And um, we're, we're working toward that every day, and it was better today. Next question from Joe Nugent, W-O-W-T. Scott, I'm curious about Thursday. Um, will you guys have a practice? You'll travel. And then, you know, Thanksgiving for so many people is going to be different this year. Um, will it be a, a different experience compared to other years for the team, whether or not you can get together or not? Yeah, this whole year has been rough and, and trying to manage things. Um, we're going to treat Thursday like it's a normal Friday for us and head over there. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to work through right now how many guys we can let go home. If we go home and get some guys with the virus, that could put our season in jeopardy, the rest of the season in jeopardy. And um, I'm sure our guys after this long haul are ready to go see family. Uh, but uh, we got a couple more games to play. So we're trying to work through that schedule right now. But we'll treat Thursday, uh, other than a nice team meal, um, the same as we do the day before any game. Sam McEwen, Omaha World Herald. Hey, Scott, I have two very different questions. The first one is this. You, you've been a quarterback coach and a, a, you know, an offensive guy for a long time. You know what it looks like when it's really good, um, and you know what a good quarterback looks like. Um, you, you recruited and coached Marcus Mariotti, recruited Justin Herbert, even though you didn't coach him, but Lubick did, and you had Mackenzie Milton. Um, how close are your quarterbacks right now to the kind of players that those guys were uh, and 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 those kind and that kind of play. How close are they, and what, what do they need to do to get there? Um, they both have enough talent to be those guys, Sam. And um, 
we haven't uh, we haven't gotten them playing there yet. Uh, you know, Luke Luke was in his second start. Um, that's tough. Um, you know, Adrian uh, has all the talent in the world and and has the capability of doing it. Th those guys can both be just like the people you asked about. Um, but there's been games where we haven't played like that. And uh, we have to do a better job as coaches to make sure that um, we get those guys to max out their potential. The the other question is, Jojo Doman said that you guys practiced this week as as physical as humanly possible. Uh, what was the thinking behind that? I mean, I've, Iowa's a very physical team, but but the, the players seem to note that the practices were really physical and rigorous. And I was just curious what the thinking was behind that and how your team has responded. Um, other than trying to get the guys to play hard, practice hard, um, that we didn't we didn't do as well as I wanted last week, and the execution wasn't well as I wanted. We didn't change practice. Um, I think it, it's just uh, the intensity's better, and that's what we need when we're playing any game, especially Iowa. Thank you. Next question, Kevin Suits, K O L N K G I N. Hey, Scott, in, sp in spite of it being a very uh, unconventional year and all the challenges you guys have had to endure, you get to maintain the tradition of uh, playing on the day after Thanksgiving. What does that mean to you and the program to uh, continue to do that? Well, we're excited to be playing football. We fought to play football. Well, I'm glad we're playing. Uh, no matter what happens, I'm glad we're getting this experience. To get better as a football team, we need to be able to play. Um, it's great we get to play Iowa. I got so much respect for Coach Ferentz and their program. Um, we've been in two close ones that we lost at the last second, the first two years. Um, they're going to make you earn it, man. They, they're a physical team. They're good on defense. They, they do a great job on offense. Um, we're excited to be playing. And it has been a weird year. It's been a challenging year. Um, trying to handle every, every one of these weird situations the right way, but great that we're getting a chance to, to play this football game. Next question, Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Coach, I know every game's important in Nebraska, but when you size in on this final three-game stretch, how defining is this stretch going to be for you guys to, to show some progress and, and, and get things back where you want them to be? Yeah, it's important. Um, you know, it, we uh, we're we're so much better in so many ways, uh, but we weren't Saturday, and that's that's what frustrates me. Is we've taken steps forward. I feel like we took a step back Saturday. Um, we got more talent in this program than we've had the last two years. The talent keeps growing. A lot of the good players that are playing for us are young, uh, freshmen, uh, playing for the first time. It, you know, to win in this league, you got to not only have the athletes on the field and have the right X's and O's, you got to execute it really well. And that's easier to do with a veteran team than it is a young team. Um, I think uh, defensively, Saturday wasn't what we wanted, but our, our defense has been running and hitting better. Um, we got the pieces on, at skill on offense now, some of them young. Uh, so the progress is evident when you're inside these walls, um, but it's got to show up on the field. And uh, we're playing three games uh, against three good opponents. We're going to take our swing. Uh, there's no doubt that the improvements are being made. It's got to show up on the football field, and we've got to catch some momentum. Andy Kendi, KETV. Hey, Coach. Um, two questions. One, can you give us an update on, on Colin Miller? And two, um, when you talk about juice at practice, does it help? knowing that Iowa is at the end of the week. Yeah, I think so. It shouldn't, we shouldn't need to uh, be playing a rival uh, to prepare well, but um, if that's what it takes, then, then I hopefully it helps this week. Um, Colin was at practice today. He didn't take part in practice, but he was out there with his teammates and I gave him a big hug and uh, I think a lot of guys were excited to see him. Is it possible that that he would return before the season is over? Uh, doubtful. Um, we're going to be careful with him and make sure that uh, that he's going to be okay long term. His health is the most important thing. Evan Bland, Omaha World Herald. Hey Scott, from a, a just a general coaching perspective, where do you guys as a staff 
begin when you self-evaluate as coaches and identify ways that you guys can improve and adjust? I mean, is that game day stuff? Is that how you practice schemes? Where, where does that start for you guys? Yeah, you know, we're always looking for ways to be a little bit better, Evan. Um, we're certainly not going to completely change a formula that's been so successful going back a long time. Uh, but we all have to uh, self-examine and make sure we're doing everything we can to win. Um, you know, we, we didn't do a good job getting the team mentally ready to play last week, and and we didn't play well. Uh, we didn't play anywhere near as well as we could play. To win in this league, you got to play your best. Um, you know, I, I, the rest of the year, I, I've been happy with our energy and effort at Ohio State. Uh, shoot, Northwestern looks like a a playoff team right now, and we had every chance in the world in that game and uh, found a way to beat Penn State. Um, but we can't play like we did Saturday. Uh, again, credit to Illinois, but we can't play like that. And uh, wins are too hard to come by in this league to let that happen. So whatever coaches need to do to, to make sure the team's ready, we need to do it. Jacob Bartecki, KRNU. Uh, Coach, I'm not asking for the game plan, but you guys have not seemed to have like a solid one go-to guy at running back. I was wondering if in practice anyone has been kind of up there towards the top above everyone else. And then uh, just to follow up, is do you have a stats on Jack Stoll for this weekend? Yes, Jack's fine. Um, yeah, uh, Mills was kind of our lead running back. He's been nicked up. Um, that puts us in a position where we got Wandale that we want to use at receiver, but can put him in the backfield and can do special things and some freshmen. And those freshmen have been battling it out. And um, I can't tell you there's one that's clearly on top because they're all talented kids, but uh, that's the that's the boat we're rowing in right now. Thank you. Thank you. Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Hey, Scott, um, back to the quarterbacks. Um, when you've been through a shakeup uh, during the season, like you have this year, where you changed guys, is, is there a, an extra concern at all about potentially going down that road again? And, and how much do you have to consider um, all of the guys involved and how it impacts their confidence if, if you have an uns unsettled uh, situation at that position? Yeah, I don't think. Um being around the guys every day, I don't think the rest of the team's going to be affected. Um, I care about those two kids so deeply. Um, and, you know, I, I've been kind of benched here before as a quarterback if, for a short time during a game. Uh, got booed when I came back into the game uh, to some degree. Um, sometimes you need that shake up and it puts a, a chip on your shoulder. Um, there's no doubt in my mind Luke McCaffrey's the, the future around here. Um, but right now to help us win, we got to play the guy that gives us the best chance. And I think Adrian's been playing with a little chip on his shoulder. Luke's playing well. Uh, so we're going to evaluate this week and, um, and see which one goes out there. Um, and I feel good about both of them. Uh, we just need to keep coaching them as well as we can so we get the, the best that we can out of them. Got time for about three more. Andrew Ward, KLKN TV. Hey, Scott. A little bit of a lighter note here. Do you have a favorite Thanksgiving memory or food or anything like that? Uh, man, uh, memory is one of the, one of the uh, challenging things about being in football is you, you lose Thanksgiving. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, I like cranberry sauce on my turkey. Some people are into it, some aren't. I love it. Steve Sipple, Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, Scott, what have you noticed defense is doing to, to, against Wandale? Is there anything in particular that you notice that they're taking away or trying to take away? Um, they're, they're aware of where he is all the time. Um, you know, some of the quick throws, some of the option routes, some of the fast screens, they know where we, where he is. Um, but uh, not taking anything away, no. We, we have a lot of people up near the line of scrimmage against us right now until we're, we're going to be able to push the ball uh, downfield better. So uh, just to make everything clear here, 
you don't know who the starting quarterback will be at this point on Saturday, on Friday, excuse me. No, just like last week, uh, we're letting them compete and um, not sure. Thank you, Scott. Okay, I have two more. Uh, Brian Christofferson, Nebraska 24 7. Hey, Scott, um, from the middle linebacker perspective, just a, a football question. What do you do there now with, with Colin gone? And I know Luke got dinged a little bit at the end. How do you feel about what? Your part, your pieces there. I feel good. Um, I think Luke's going to be fine. Um, you know, uh, we can always move Nick back to that spot. Um, Snodgrass has done some good things and got some playing time. So we still got some guys we that we feel good about there. I have one more. How do you keep young guys? There was a couple of young guys who tweeted out some frustrations after the game and stuff. And I know you got a locker room full of 150 guys, so it, it's hard to keep everyone happy but how do you keep guys motivated especially during a year like this with COVID and and all of that that you're dealing with yeah it's a challenge um you know I was the second ranked quarterback in the country I think coming out of high school I didn't play until my fourth year of college um things worked out great for me um freshman years are hard because you're used to being the the star of the show in high school and you come and uh, very few freshmen are capable and able to start their freshman year um, this year has been even tougher. There's no fans in the stands. They don't get to see what Memorial Stadium looks like. Um, you know, we're going to be done with school and still have a few weeks of season left here. Uh, so there's, there's been probably even more challenging before. But at the end of the day, um, a lot of kids need to learn to be patient. And if, if they persevere, things are going to work out better for them. Not everything happens easy or right away or when you want it to. Uh, kind of like the progress we're making as a team, but hasn't quite gotten there yet. And we try to teach those lessons to those kids every day. Um, at the end of the day, some of them will learn them. Um, some won't and won't, won't stick around here or somewhere else they go. But uh, that's the challenge facing a lot of us. Thank you, Scott. And our last question comes from Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Hey, Scott. Uh, can you confirm the nature of... Uh of Collins' injury, uh, I know that you say that when a guy's going to be out for the season, maybe sometimes you can do that. Um, yeah, they're still kind of testing everything to make sure. Um, they're calling it a spinal concussion. So um, I can only tell you what that sounds like to me, but that I don't think they found any um, any serious issues that went on I think it uh he just took a hit and in, in the right, exact wrong way and um sounds like everything down the road is gonna be fine 